All right, here we go, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I'm a boomer. I think I'm a zoomer. I think I'm a doomer. Damn, I'm like a zoomer. Okay. E double G W H I T E coming with the heat. I stay fooling with my bop, my tunes will make you speak as hot. Dance bar, hop, stop. Let's speak. fucking go! Welcome to the Grillcast, the only podcast in the world dedicated to radical centrism. I am your host, Orion, and joining me as always is Micah. What's up, buddy? I, I gotta tell you, it's it's great to be here. Great to be back. Always great to be with you, my friend. And we have a very special guest today. We have we have a soldier of fortune. We have a man who's traveled to Afghanistan. He's lived the military life. A, a true, a true man. We got Sergeant Andy in the house. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm really excited to be here. And we're excited to have you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I really I really wanted to talk to somebody who's been there, who's been on the ground. As we all know, we're pulling out of Afghanistan, allegedly, according to our president, Joe Biden. He says that after 20 years of fighting in the Middle East, that, you know, it's time to it's time to go. It's time to pull out. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this, Sergeant Andy, as someone who's been boots on the ground, who's been there, who's experienced it all, who's spread freedom and democracy through the world? Well, you know, man, so I was there in 2018. So this was only, you know, three years ago. So I was four years old when 9-11 happened. And then years later, I'm fighting in the same war that started when I was four. So like, that's a long time. And uh, I just, I I think it's time to go. I don't necessarily, that's not necessarily the opinion of, uh, of anyone else, but it just, when I was there, it just seemed stupid. And we need to focus on more important things than being tied up in the Middle East trying to find terrorists and kill them when they're never gonna be able to attack the U.S. homeland. I would say this, you know, you were four years old when 9-11 happened, and how many 9-11s have there been since we've invaded the Middle East? Very true, Uh, very true. There have been zero, but that is more Uh thanks, that's more thanks to the intelligence community and the way all of the intelligence reforms that happened after the post 9-11 commission uh, to stop terrorist attacks on the homeland rather than necessarily what we've done on the ground killing Taliban. You know, like the Taliban wasn't our enemy before 9-11. They were a rogue regime that ran Afghanistan, but that wasn't necessarily any of our business. We were there to kill Al-Qaeda, and we mostly accomplished that mission within the first few years of being there. And then that kind of culminated when we killed Osama bin Laden in Pakistan in 2010, 11. There's still some remnants of Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, you know, trying to rebuild. And then there's a branch of ISIS in Afghanistan, but they're mostly in shambles. Uh, so well, see, the, the job isn't done is what I'm hearing from you right now. The job isn't yeah. done. We need to look. It, it's it, it's like COVID, you know, you just let it go. It's going to spread. We need to take out every single case or it's going to spread again. You know, I, I'll put it this way. I'm here to execute the lawful intent of the government. And if Joe Biden says it's time to go, it's time to go. You know, I, I'm just days. worried. I'm just worried that without troops on the ground in the Middle East, that our way of life, primarily eating hamburgers and having butt sex, is no longer going to be secure <laughs> from the insurgent groups that that that, you know, that they find that distasteful. But, you know, I'm I'm a red blooded American. OK, and, and I have expectations for how for how I should be able to, you know, comfortably carry myself out. And if I if I feel like, you know, some people, some randos who are, you know, who are fundamentalists and and don't like those things, you know, if we're not there shooting at them, then I just kind of feel like they're going to they're going to do something. So I'll I'll put it this way. I don't think after September 11th of this year, when we're supposed to be completely pulled out of Afghanistan, I don't think that's going to be the last military operation in Afghanistan. There will still be cases where there's intelligence gathered on a certain terrorist that may be planning an attack abroad uh, or something like that. And we may send a strike force of like tier one operators from Kuwait or Qatar or somewhere else where we have troops in the Middle East to go take care of that. Uh, But it's definitely time for us to give up on the Resolute Support mission. That's what it's called. Operation Resolute Support of us trying to rebuild the Afghan government. Okay. And they they um, just they don't take well to democracy. It doesn't work. Okay, And what is Kuwait? Uh, Kuwait is a country (laughs) in the Middle East that lets us keep soldiers there. Okay. And what is Qatar? Another country in the Middle East that lets us keep soldiers. there. I was under the I was under the belief that that was an instrument. (laughs) I don't know how to respond to that. 
Now, what I've been hearing, and and no offense here, I respect the troops, I love the troops, you know, I, I, might, I consider myself a soldier of sorts, because I would have totally joined the military, but I'm more of a lone wolf, you know? Like, I, I'm too much yeah, of a yeah, badass. Yeah. I, like, if a drill sergeant <clears throat> told me what to do, I would punch him in his fucking face, bro, because, like, you know, I, I'm not gonna let someone tell me what to do. So I, myself, as a soldier, I, you know, I, I, I look at what you're saying, and it kind of, and no offense here, it kind of sounds like you guys are just being lazy and you know you're, you're just trying to be freeloaders instead of you know accomplishing the mission of spreading democracy look a real patriot democracy, does the right thing democracy works always democracy works in every case no matter what and saying that it doesn't is in and of itself an affront to democracy your thoughts so, so back to your first comment about punching a drill sergeant in the face so i know the take that you want me to say after that uh, but I think drill sergeants are pretty cringe. Um, I don't want to be a drill sergeant. Uh, it, yeah, I I think. Well, you better not, because I'd punch you in your face, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So if I, you told I don't me like being yelled at. I thought basic training was kind of dumb. Uh, I think people can be treated like adults and still learn how to be a soldier and understand uh, discipline and military customs and courtesies. But that's just me being jaded. Most people will probably disagree with me on that. Uh, and democracy definitely does not work in Afghanistan. It, uh, it just it just hasn't. Oh. Like, <laughs> Bro. Like, <clears throat> but it's the best form. It's the best form of government. It works here. It's propelled us to the top. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and we Absolutely. should. Absolutely. Look, if they don't want to embrace democracy, if they don't vote and choose to embrace democracy, we need to force it down their throats. It's our God-given duty to do so. Hey, you know what? It definitely is America's God-given right to spread democracy wherever we see fit. It's just not time to do it, do it in Afghanistan anymore. Where we need to be doing it is in Southeast Asia, because China has become the second most powerful country in the world and is more powerful than the United States in some ways. And we need to be pining for influence in, the, in Southeast Asia and making sure that these countries know that China is a piece of shit and they need to fuck with the USA. And be so basically, yeah. so basically, what you're saying is you want to deploy to Japan because you're a weeb. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could say that Japan is pretty dope. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be down to go to Japan. I haven't been to Japan. I've been to Korea though. Uh, I do want to say that um, your idea that we need to apply military pressure to these Asian countries that aren't the Middle East. Um, we are we are here at the Grillcast are a stop Asian hate uh sponsor. We sponsor the ideology. And the idea that you, you have such hate towards China when oh, their their only crime is loving too much, really. It, it, it's hard to say because they have they have democracy in their own sort of way, if you think about it. Yeah, they definitely don't. Uh, so Xi Jinping got rid of term limits and has pretty much made himself the supreme ruler of China forever, uh, which is honestly a pretty Chad move. Like you can't yeah, yeah, you, you can't hate on that. Like <laughs> Xi Jinping, even though he looks like Winnie the Pooh, like that was a pretty big dick move. Um, the genocide, if you want to call it that, of the Uyghur Muslims, that's not very cash money. Uh, that definitely doesn't line <laughs> up with American values. And you got to remember, you got to remember that these motherfuckers went up in front of the UN Security Council, no, Human Rights Council, my bad, after all of the George Floyd or after all the George Floyd stuff happened and literally told the entire world, hey, we don't think the United States is living up to our expectations of human rights because of how police treat people. Yeah. Do we really have any concrete evidence of any quote unquote genocide going on against the what, what were they called? The Uyghur Muslims. Uyghurs? Yeah, pretty much. You you could you could Uyghur. say it that way. I mean, China, as we know it, is is an incredibly centrist nation, and in, in so far that like half of the world sees them as fascists, and the other half sees them as communists. Basically, being the the, the centrist country that they are, you know, and although it may be authoritarian. I, I'm a big China stan, and I, I frankly don't like the, the direction this conversation is going right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's mighty unfortunate, uh, but I, I'll put it this way. Man, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to respond <laughs> to facts and logic wait, sometimes. Wait, 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 it is. Who, whose side are you on, the United States or China? That's that's the real I'm, question. I'm, I'm I don't pick agent. sides. Yeah, I don't yeah. pick sides. That's yeah. fair. Picking that's sides pretty, is pretty wing cooked. That's that's pretty radically centrist. I I can appreciate that. I'll say this: like, look, the United States and China, we can act as checks and balances on each other. Yeah, I mean that's true. We check and balance their their Uyghur genocide, which honestly <laughs> sounds like a QAnon conspiracy theory. I, I'm not sure I believe.
believe it, but you know, they they can check and balance our police killings, our massive influx of, yeah. you know, hundreds yeah. of we police can, we killings. Could, we, you know, we could maybe send them some some African Americans to see how they deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's, and that's could, a good they could idea. Show us a, they could show us a better, you know, a yeah, better way that, to operate. Yeah, and then the Chinese Communist Party should come over and teach us how to police. Right. You know, I, I think that's a that's a good trade off. Look, I, I can agree with that. I, I do agree with you, though, that, you know, in a sense, I don't think we're necessarily accomplishing our missions as we would like to in Afghanistan. Uh, I'll put it this way. It's just the war on terror just isn't cool anymore. Like when it first started and up until like 2010 and through the surge and stuff, that shit was dope. Like it, it was pretty sick and everyone was on board and you know, it's been 20 years and just like any trend, you know, it's, it's overstated. It's welcome. It's time for us to find a new enemy and find something else to do that everyone can get behind that people want to hear about, you know, in okay, true American there's, fashion. There's something I agree with is that, Nothing unites Americans more than having a common enemy. And that can be that can be huge in solving the problems in wing cookery that we face today. We're all directed at each other. You know, we don't see the Middle East, we don't see Afghanistanis, we Afghanis, we don't see them as our enemy anymore because we've been there for so long and so 2000 late. We don't need to be there anymore. We need a cool new enemy to unite against and direct our wing cook rage at them. Dude, That's a like, great uniter. Yeah, man. Like when 9/11 happened i think britney spears was like still relevant or some shit i don't know it's been a while and it's just time to move on we got to find something else yeah. to do something else to be mad about god she was a snack back in the day Whew. she really was she, she was like my childhood crush until yeah. she shaved until she shaved her head i was really upset about that you took that yeah. personally that's why you don't let your daughters go to college guys that's what happens <laughs> well i think we've covered afghanistan pretty well um, you know, well, one, more, of, one more question. I, I heard um, I heard that part of this withdrawal is they're sending troops in to with to withdraw the troops. Uh, that, I don't know. I, I don't accurate? know. Probably. I do have a buddy that's there right now, uh, which is pretty wild. And he's going to carry that with him for the rest of his life. Like he's one of the last soldiers in Afghanistan. But he was supposed to come home two months ago. He's been there for like eight months already. And uh, because they're not having a unit come replace them, they pretty much told him to get fucked. And he's just got to stay there until they're ready for him to come home. It's all yeah. conditions based. So he's getting cucked pretty hard right now. Just Oof. chilling in Afghanistan. I would pose this to your friend if he's listening. So, you know, those, you know, those in uh, World War Two, there's those Japanese soldiers who were on islands that didn't know that it was time to go home, that the war was <laughs> over. And they're just yeah. in these islands for like 40 years just waiting to kill some white guys, right? Yeah. No, I, I definitely have heard about that. There was one dude that tried to keep fighting World War II for like 30 years after it ended. What if your buddy can just do that? Uh, he just stays I'll, in Afghanistan. He's a one-man army just waiting to hear from command, you know? I mean, I'll propose it to him. I think That'd he wants to come cool. home, but I think that would be pretty sick. Like, that would definitely be the way to go. I don't know how well it would go for him. He'd probably die. But, you know, do you get a sick tan when you're out there in Afghanistan? Uh, I mean, I mean, no, nah, not really, man. So, like, it, you got to think Afghanistan has a lot of mountains, but then it also has deserts. Like, there's a lot of change in elevation and climate depending on where you are in the country. But my, uh, uh, my only frame of reference for Afghanistan is like that episode, that episode of Family Guy when they're in Afghanistan and it was just a desert the whole time. So, yeah, see, that's I, more I wasn't like, aware of this topography. Yeah. So southwestern Afghanistan is like that, like Kandahar and Helmand provinces. It's kind of like a desert wasteland. But if you get up into like Kabul and I don't know, like all the way east to Nangarhar and like borders with Pakistan, like that's all mountains. So, you know, it's a very diverse country. There's many different tribes many different ethnicities, many different climates, many different cultures. I did have yeah. that thought when I was like, when I was in the American Southwest, like New Mexico and Nevada and Arizona, like I was like, this must be what the fucking Middle East is like. It's yeah. crazy how many cultures and tribes and how diverse Afghanistan can be. And yet they're all terrorists. Yeah. It's yeah. Crazy. It's crazy wild. how they, they can all be united under that one ideology of hating America. Yeah. I mean, they're not all like that. I mean, some of them like uh, this. I mean, like, I don't know, man. As most a soldier of, myself, I mean, most Afghan people don't really give a shit about America or the Taliban. They don't really want to take sides. They just want to chill they just with want their to grill. Yeah, they, they, they really just, do. They just bro. want to grill their kebabs. <laughs> they do, man. They just want to chill with their goats and their three wives uh, and multiple kids in their little village and just farm and vibe, dude. That's all they want to do. 
and we're busy trying to spread freedom. The Taliban is trying to stop us from spreading freedom, and they just want to grill, man. So it's time for us to go. We'll see how it goes. Well, good luck to the the grilling Afghanis out there. Yeah, I, w- I wish them the best. Now, they have some extremists to deal with over there, but we have some extremists of our own. Uh, according to the Pentagon, the Pentagon has made a target list for extremist infiltrators of the right and the left. Uh, it's a memo they put out in Declassified, I believe, March 27th. I mean, it was never classified, but uh, yeah, I'm all for it. You know, a lot of people have complained about it within the military. You know, oh, they're targeting different political ideologies, blah, blah, blah. I think it's dope. You know, after what happened on January 6th, which is probably the most wing cut thing I've seen happen in a really, really long time. Uh, yeah, we don't hmm. want infiltrators like that within the ranks of the United States military. Now, I would pose this to you. You know, I don't I don't see this as a bad thing. Um, we'll go over some of these groups and some of these ideas that they're trying to stamp out in just a minute. But I just see it as one extremist violent group trying to purge itself of other extremist violent groups infiltrating their ranks and, you know, weakening their their goals and how they want to achieve them. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry, that was... I, I think that was a galaxy brain take. I think so. If I understood because, it correctly. I, yeah. Maybe I'm just having trouble understanding it because <laughs> I, um, I don't have a galaxy brain. Is the military not an extremist group? I mean, you just, you got to elaborate. In, in what way is the military an extremist group? I might agree with you. Well, they have, they have a set, a rigorous <laughs> ideology that they want to set and the goals they want to achieve and if you get in the way of it they'll fucking kill you yeah basically if like like if chris dorner and ted kaczynski were an organization they'd they'd be they'd be the military i mean i I don't know about ted kaczynski being uh yeah I i don't know about that take i will i will say this i uh i kind of agree with you you know there is definitely some indoctrination involved with being in the military uh but on that we can't have other ideologies messing with that. You know, our goal is to become part of the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen and execute the lawful intent of our Lord and Savior, Joe Biden, whatever that may be, because he is. Well, that's president. kind of the point, like the lawful, the lawful intent can kind of like change with the wind. I mean, like, so the, what's the point of saying, like, let's stamp out these extremist ideologies if those extremist ideologies could be in power, like, in the next four years? Well, that's kind of the point. Whatever ideology is in power, then that is what the United States military will do. The lawful intent of whoever is in charge of the United States government. People can't be coming in to the military with their own wing-cucked views, oh, okay. whether, that's, whether that's left or right trying to stand for something that is not in line with the goals of the United States it's government. Kinda like, it's kind of like coup insurance. Yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, you could put it that way. I kind of disagree with you here in a way. I, oh. I agree with you mostly, but look, you can have these people in the military accomplishing military goals. Have you ever seen Suicide Squad? I have. That's a great movie. I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> here's, here's my idea here. Harley Quinn is, is hot. Margot Robbie's hot as fuck. So, you know, it's uh, a great movie. Fair enough. She she kind of looks like the... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm just saying, like, she's the kind of bitch that would key your car and burn your shit down. Oh, um, absolutely. So, anyway, to get on to get on with my point, uh, so here's my ideas. You can take these wing cucks, you can bring them in, you can test them and see, oh, this person's a wing cuck. You can put the wing cuck fodder, you know, your normal proud boy or Antifa or whatnot, put them on the front lines, put them, put them in situations which endanger them and, Basically you know, what the Marines do right now, <laughs> but, but, but make it the wing cucks instead. So they can be, they can be, they can be fodder, right? But then you have the leaders, you have the thought leaders. Like you were saying earlier, Chris Dorner, Ted Kaczynski, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we can make a suicide squad of these people, have like Derek Chauvin, and you, you, you like reinforce his knee or whatever. Um, <laughs> get Richard Spencer, get like Raz, the guy who was running Chaz for a while, get all these people and put those collars around their necks. And say, look, you need to go accomplish this mission. You guys are the only ones. You guys are the only ones who can do this. And you can send them out to do these super dangerous missions that they probably won't come back from. But imagine, they, you know, they all hate each other. It'd be You could live stream it and watch it and see their little interactions about how they, they learn, uh, oh, this is my teammate now. You know, I started off hating you, but now I understand you. 
I like that idea because that's a really capitalist take, you know, live stream them going out on missions. The problem is it wouldn't work because they're not going to fight for each other while they're on the front line trying to accomplish whatever mission they're trying to accomplish. I'm okay. I'm okay with all of them dying. Like that's cool. Yeah, that's, like, the, that's the main point. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> and, and we could make some money off of it, you know? Yeah. Well, you gotta, you have to put them in roles where they, uh, you know, it, that supports what they would do, you know? You have to empower them to empower themselves. Dude, what the fuck would Richard Spencer do? <laughs> um, I feel like, I feel like he would, he'd be like an infiltrator or something, like a spy, but one that has gay sex. Dude, he's like the lame, he's, so you, you know he's gay. He's like the lamest white supremacist ever. Oh, like, yeah, Richard Spencer's <laughs> super gay. What did, didn't he tweet, like, recently that, like, homosexuality is the last implicit stand of white identity? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was like, you know what, he's not wrong. I don't think he's He tweeted that? Does, does he have a Twitter? Yeah. He does. He's, Trump doesn't have a Twitter and Richard Spencer does. That's of course. solid. Yeah, yeah. Of course. That's how it goes. Because Trump is actually, like, effective at, at doing things. That's the society we live in. Let's let's talk about some of these extremist groups this DARPA memo talks about. The domestic extremist ideology is posing the greatest risk to the Department of Defense includes patriot extremism. Their core belief is as follows. This ideology holds that the U.S. government has become corrupt, has overstepped its constitutional boundaries, or is no longer capable of protecting the people against foreign threats. On these grounds, they refuse to accept the government's authority to tax or govern them. As such, they do not believe they are subject to the laws of the U.S. Now, that's that's obviously insane. The idea that the U.S. government has become corrupt or overstepped its constitutional boundaries? Yeah, see, that's insane. Like, how can you actually believe that? And you see what I you see know. why we, we you see why we can't have people like that within the ranks of the United States military because those yeah. are the kind of people that we would have to go crush if they were trying to start a coup. We can't have them within our ranks, you know. Fuck that. Those are right wing wing cucks, and fuck them. Get them out. Yeah. Well, it's not just the right wing. Well, yeah, but th- them specifically. There are. More. Oh wait, are you implying that the only people that can be patriotic are right wingers? No, I'm not. I'm talking about that group specifically. I'm sorry, who were we just talking about? I was I was like not paying attention. <laughs> Micah, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Uh, anarchist extremism is the next domestic ideology. Uh, core belief. This ideology is opposed to government in all its forms. They reject elected officials, laws, or police. This ideology has the ultimate goal of total elimination of government. Additionally, they are opposed to capitalism and corporations. I mean, being opposed to corporations, you can't be in the military and be opposed to corporations. Corporations are the military's greatest asset. Absolutely. You know, I mean... A- anarchism is actually pretty based. Uh, you know, it's. No, dude. No. <laughs> but. Yeah, but... I mean, the, 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 they're basically talking about like the like like anarchist sovereign citizens. Like when I think of anarchists, I I think yeah. of sovereign citizens. But those are like practicing anarchists, and those are the most annoying fucking nitwits. No, that, they're that, that walk the streets of this country. They're annoying, but at the same time, they reject communism and they reject capitalism you know they just want to be left alone yeah you're right i don't see that's the thing about anarchists that i've encountered is that most of the time they're just communists or capitalists that hate their parents yeah so they're like that's oh i'm anarcho i'm gonna say i'm anarcho this that way i don't have to take responsibility for the fact that my form of government hurts people see i want there to be no government even though i know that'll never happen yeah it's a cop-out it's it's the biggest cop out of all time. The biggest political, the philosophical cop out is just like sticking anarcho next to whatever philosophy you have, and just be like, well, it's not possible because we'll, we'll the, the state will never dissolve. But you can you can trust me when I say this would all work. As a radical centrist, I'm very opposed to any cop out ideology. Mm. No, for that's, people to that's take fair. some take some sort of moral high ground and say, look, I'm going to remove myself from from the effects of my actual ideology by placing these words in front of it instead that's just ridiculous yeah Yeah. well i mean you see why we can't have anarchists in the united states military right because okay the united states military is the most powerful military force in the world by far because we spend more on our military than like the next seven countries combined and we don't just run the united states you know the u.s military is an instrument for the united states to run the rest of the world also 
Yeah, so you can't, baby. Yeah, you, can, you can't you can't have anarchists talking about they don't like the authority of the U.S. government when we're supposed to be part of that authority. Like, fuck off, dude. Go back to Reddit r slash anarchy or whatever the fuck it is, and yeah. go cry go cry some more. You know, maybe get think... a maybe maybe get a job if they had yeah. like a well paying job. Uh, then you know maybe they wouldn't be anarchists because they would actually benefit from the establishment that has been built. I sympathize with them a little bit though because I think that they are people who are like me that you know if a drill sergeant was trying to tell them what to do they'd punch him in his fucking face. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you so, totally would. Like you totally would. I, I don't would. think a drill sergeant would fuck with you, man. Bro, no. If a drill sergeant put me in a self defense situation by telling me what to do, I'd say I'm sorry, man. I'm my own soldier. Why don't you piss off? pussy yeah dude if you went to basic training if you went to basic training i think the drill sergeants would look at you and just say hey you know what you're in charge now like why don't you why don't why don't you teach us something (laughs) better yet why don't better yet why don't you go get stationed at the pentagon and be in charge of the extremism training for the future honestly dude that's what they need to do. They need to find, they need to, to gather a radical centrist coalition to be in charge of that. I agree 100%. I, I think you guys would crush that job. Oh, absolutely. We, we, we would not let anyone go unchecked for their wing, their wing cucked ideologies. And, you know, another positive aspect to this program is that now that the, the war on terror is ending, you know, we're going to be able to keep all the people in the interrogation and torture department employed. <laughs> I don't know about that. The U.S. stopped uh, like torturing people you under a, under under Obama. You, you don't. You no. Don't you don't. You don't believe no, that. No, they didn't. <laughs> you don't even don't. Hey, don't that's be a, cheeky. That's no. the that that's the official stance on it. No. O- Obama well, okay. came in well. and was like, "Hey, we can't do this anymore. We're gonna stop." Told the world we stopped, which means we stopped. I trust Obama. Yeah, he seems like a pretty straight shooter. I mean... I don't want to be racist and say that he didn't. Yeah, you don't want to be racist. I don't want to believe that we're the laughing stock of the world, and if we stopped torturing people, we, we definitely would be. So, do you guys want to look at some of these symbols of extremism that this document lays out? Naturally, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bro yeah i mean you definitely can't have the isis flag on uh on your truck or something that probably wouldn't be the move so some of these symbols that are on here for our viewers include the uh antifa flag the QAnon flag there's pepe the frog not even not even an extremist pepe just normal pepe the frog we got uh what is this here we have a noose in front of the Capitol building is that, or the White House? That's the Capitol building. Yeah, it's a noose. Yeah, that's, just, that's probably not noose. good. Yeah. Look at that extremist keyboard. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of want one of those yeah. keyboards. <laughs> we got uh, the OK hand gesture. <laughs> And I think my favorite one is this flag of a AK and it says come and take it and the background is a rebel flag, but it's super bleached. It's super washed out so you can barely even tell it's that flag. I I feel like there's some debate whether or not that was an extremist symbol or not. And they had to come to that uh they had to come to that Dude, conclusion. I just, I just want to point out compromise. the compromise. Uh, sorry, I just I really need to point out the irony of the sovereign license plate because because a sovereign citizen wouldn't have a fucking license plate. <laughs> Shit. I, I wanna point out that the AK over the Confederate flag is really dumb because AKs are Russian weapons. Yeah. So that's that's kind of weird. Like it just doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know, whatever. This this was clearly put together by like a commissioned officer a in his fifties. Or a oh, woman. absolutely. Yeah, that's also possible. <laughs> this was put together by a woman. Yeah, and then uh, there's the and then there's the three percenter oath keeper uh symbol. So that's probably the biggest one that's in the military is people having three percenter stickers on their trucks and stuff like that. And just being super gung ho about their guns. Look, as someone who, you know, I'm part of not just the three percent, but the one percent. I don't understand this sort of a uh, hedge phobia. This, as a person of income, I don't understand why the military doesn't like high earners like me who pay so many taxes to fund our expeditions around the world. Why don't they like the three percent? Uh, it's the wait. What? Hold on. <laughs> We're gonna have to cut this. <laughs> You lost me there for a second. The oh, Ryan, I think you're you're you are confusing uh, two different yeah. things. Yeah, so I'm talking about the three I don't percenters. Understand. The three percenters <laughs> are, like, 
Or like the the Oath Keepers that say, like, if the U.S. government was going to come take their guns, that they would fight back and, like, shoot cops and shit. Wait, so is 3% supposed to represent what they estimate the number of people who would resist that are, or what is that supposed to represent? I think so. I'm actually not entirely sure. Where do they get these numbers? Do they have a source to back up their claims? Probably not. (laughs) Typical wing cucks. No source to back up their claims. Mm. So there's a... An extremist ideology is not specifically targeting the U.S. government or the Department of Defense. Uh, These include religious extremism. Um, I think we all know about that. My favorite, though, anti-feminism. An ideology that holds that modern men have been emasculated by feminism and they need to reestablish themselves as the dominant gender. Often referred to as incels for involuntary celibates, they openly call for the attack, raping, and killing of women. Primary target, women, especially women they perceive as attractive, referred to as Stacys, who sexually reject or would likely reject unattractive men. Attractive men, referred to as Chads, who are not sexually rejected by women. (laughs) Feminists, men who don't stand against feminism. (laughs) I don't understand. Like, how can only... How can only anti-feminism be an extremist ideology, but not like feminism can't be an extremist ideology? I think they yeah. both can. I mean, exactly. I, I had that same question. Like, you need to be feminist, but not too femi- feminist, you know? You got to just have that right amount of like, yeah, women can serve in combat roles because that's what the U.S. government said. I think you got it all wrong. I think I think what I'm, I'm trying to convey is that people should be both misandrist and misogynist. I do agree with that, but I also believe that women should be able to serve in the military. Look, there's roles so, that they can fill, like they can they can cook food or they can be nurses. As long as they stay away from flying <laughs> flying planes, I think we're all good. They can do whatever they want. We just got to be realistic. So, here. so I, th- I think here's the thing, and here's why we can't have incels in our military, is you got to remember... <laughs> Our existence is to fight and win our nation's wars. And there's a certain amount of lifting weights, drinking, and being a total fucking Chad that goes along with that, you know? And you can't have these fucking weirdos that don't leave their rooms crying because they can't get laid. They need to be out with the boys getting laid before they deploy. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? The Navy's existed for over, you know, what, 200 (laughs) years? Dude, they figured it out. The Navy, they started fucking each other. A lot of the Navy is gay. That's the joke. But it's kind of true, you know. Every Can't branch be an ha- incel if you suck a dick. Exactly. I mean, we're cool with gay people in the military, man. Like, don't ask, don't tell. Got repealed like a long time ago. Like, that's fine. Just don't be a fucking incel. Like, would you want an incel? <laughs> <laughs> if you're fucking... gonna be gay, at least be having gay sex. Like, come on now. Yeah, dude. Like, there's some gay chads out there that are like, yeah, I suck dick, bro. Yeah, like Richard Spencer. <laughs> I can agree with that. Hold on. Can you go back down for a second real quick to the uh, that little graph thing, the three yeah. stages? Um, isn't that just every ideology ever? Yeah. So what, what Mike is talking about here is there's a three there's a three step graph and it starts with radicalization, the process of developing ex- increasingly hostile or antagonistic views towards a particular group, ideology or institution like against Al-Qaeda. Violent extremism, the belief that a group's survival, honor, or success is predicated on violent action against a specific adversary or the larger society, like Afghanistan. (laughs) And then extremist acts, violent, destructive, or endangering actions taken to intimidate or coerce a civilian population, or thusly influence government policy or decisions, like spreading democracy in the Middle East. (laughs) This is what I'm saying! The U.S. military is an extremist (laughs) group they are an extremist group and they're purging these other extremists because they get in the way of their goals it's like you know like if you have a group of nazis they're not just gonna let a communist be in there being like hey guys well maybe we should you know maybe we should do this communist stuff too no they're gonna kick their ass out that's that's my point and now it's come full circle and thank you to this graph the united states military is the ultimate radical centrist organization we have to spread our radical centrism throughout the world, and we can't let other ideologies get in the way of that. That's the point. And so we have to kick we have to kick them out of the military. I have always maintained that the U.S. military is a very centrist organization, mostly because it's comprised of people from all walks of life that don't want to pay for college. 
<laughs> exactly, dude. It, there, it's a very diverse group of poor people that are slightly less poor now because they get paid by the government, and we're just all one big happy family. That's beautiful. Yeah, and and also also we have universal health care in the military. We all have free Based. health insurance. Yeah. Which that I'm, is what I've always told poor people. It's like, look, if you want to stop being poor, join the military, ask your parents for a loan, or shut the fuck up. Like, there's multiple <laughs> ways to get out of it, and they just don't listen. <laughs> you, Dude. you were smart enough to get out of it because you joined a nice, based, radical centrist organization. If you can't join the military because you're like me, you're, you're a lone soldier, you're a lone wolf prowling in the world too badass to join the military yeah. you should Chris be Dorner smart type. enough yeah yeah I, I i wouldn't compare myself to that necessarily for legal reasons but i would say look if you're a badass like me and you can't join because you're too tough and you don't want to scare everyone else in the military <laughs> like you know you, you just ask your parents for a loan and buy some property yeah rent or- it out yeah, and then if you join the military, you get your VA loan, which is zero down and usually a really low interest rate, and you can buy a house that way. So the military makes up for not having rich parents, and you can still be a land chad once you get out. Well, if your parents don't have the money, just have them ask their parents for a loan to loan you. Oh. I mean, there, there's many options. There's yeah, many but, options. Yeah. There's many options here. I think that about wraps that up. I will move on to our last segment here. It'll be a bit of a shorter one and not related to the military at all. It's about Bill Gates. Uh, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates got divorced. You know, they announced recently that after 26 years of marriage, they're breaking it off. They're they're pursuing better better things. I think every everybody who's looking to come up in life right now should be sliding into Melinda Gates DMs. I did. Look, how many PS5s could you get for clearing out the fucking cobwebs out of that cave? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, bro, you'll get a PS6 if you fuck that chick. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. There's there's a real opportunity here. Um, why wouldn't Why wouldn't you get like an Xbox Series X? You'll get an Dude. Xbox Series Z, bro. <laughs> Dude, you'll get shit that doesn't even exist yet. Here's Here's another option. Slide into Bill Gates's DMs. Ooh. Say, hey, man, I'm not gay, but you know, I might be for you. Like, yeah. Honestly, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot <clears throat> to gain there. I'd like you would, put your microchip in me, Bill Gates. If you Dude. know what I'm saying. If I was Bill Gates right now, I would just buy all the dating apps. <laughs> just buy. He can buy <laughs> Tinder and then just make himself. Delete, the and he can only, just yeah. He can just delete, delete all, all the other profiles. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if I was Bill Gates right now, I would be throwing like the most insane parties. I would just invite all of the women I could, and I would just make it super public and rub it in Melinda in Melinda Gates's face. Like this is what I was missing out on, so now I'm gonna do it. Like he should have a hot boy summer, a white boy summer, both. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, look, that's what Bill Gates would do if he was based, and if you were a Chad, which you would think a billionaire, probably yeah. a based Chad. Uh, I have a clip here that's going to show the dynamic of their relationship and what exactly what exactly that all is. Um, it, it'll yeah. show what kind of person he really is. Let's watch. So you're working yeah. long hours and Microsoft is taking all of your attention. How does that work with Melinda? Well, when we first met, she had other boyfriends and I had Microsoft. You know, we were like, hey, we're not really serious about each other, are we? We're not going to demand each other's time. I was new to Microsoft. There were there were a lot of men there, <laughs> um, and you know you you're still looking around. You know you're still figuring it out. But after about a year of that, you know, sort of to our surprise, <laughs> she got ran my through. Surprise, she got ran through. I mean, Bill Gates probably is a cuck. Like, if we're being honest, he definitely sounds like one. He has the the voice of a cuck, and. He just says, like, yeah, you know, she dated other men. I had Microsoft. Microsoft got successful. She hopped off the cock carousel, hopped with me. And you could see her, you could see her too, talking about, like, there were other men in her eyes for a second. They lit up so hard thinking about all those other men that she banged before she settled down with Bill. You can be a billionaire and not, if you're a fucking nerd like Bill Gates, if you're a fucking cringe nerd like Bill Gates, you're still going to be stuck with used goods. Dude, see, 
I, I don't know. I think Bill Gates is like a cuck in the most literal sense of the term. Like, I think they yeah. spent the last 27 years of their marriage. I think he got off to like sitting in the corner watching her get absolutely fucking railed by like <laughs> six black dudes just <laughs> just nutting on her face. And he's just in the corner like, yeah, honey, I love this. Yeah, I mean, I don't it know. Is, it's it just is sad. Fun, it is fun to fantasize about, even though it'll never happen. Like, just to see Bill Gates come out, like, post a picture on Instagram with, like, some fucking pit vipers on. Like, yeah. dri- driving a Lamborghini with, like, a tank top that says yeah. sun's out, just, sun's he out. Just, he just starts doing a bunch of gang shit. Yeah, just, <laughs> like, like sm- smoking a joint and, like, the caption is, headed to Miami, bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> starts posting fucking pictures with rappers and stuff. Like, inviting rappers to come hang out with him. Yeah. Like, that'd be fucking sick. I am I really hope he does that, even though he won't. He's just like, I bought Epstein's old island. I heard it's still got all the amenities. <laughs> Fly through, bros. Oh, my God. He's yeah, a multiple I don't know about visitor. That. Was he? Was he yeah. on the fucking list? Yeah. I mean, that's what I read on 4chan, which is where I get all my news. <laughs> yeah, so. I was going to I was gonna say, that would add a lot of depth to this conversation that I'm not sure I want to go into. Well, whether he was on the island or whether Orion gets all his information from 4chan. Whether or not Bill Gates was on the island. Or if, Look, if he was, what it takes we could uh, come up with based on that. I mean, Look, was, I don't think know. there's anything wrong with going on a nice island vacation. You're chilling in the sun by the on the beach with some waves, just relaxing. I, th- that's you know, we don't have proof of anything else. I'm somebody, you know, I, I I'm facts and logic oriented. Just because you go to a suspicious pizza place or island or what have you, doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. You're innocent until proven guilty is what I say. Well, I mean, the official report is that Epstein did kill himself. So if that's what the government is saying, that's true. And to say otherwise is is somewhat anti-Semitic. What yeah. was Epstein and, ever and convicted? No. Exactly, yeah. he, well, he wasn't not even for like twenty him. years. So, so basically, if you say Epstein didn't kill himself, you're a fucking Nazi. So fuck you. I'll have you know that Epstein is a man who refused to traffic black women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, the thing, I have a problem with that, though, because it's like, I like to see representation. Yeah, that's fair. So to yeah, see him refuse of, to do so. There there should be, like, diversity among I think the it was. I think it was place. a matter of, like, redistributive justice, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That's beyond my pay grade. I, I I just trust a billionaire's judgment in general. Honestly. Well, I I think uh, I think we've we've covered all that we can cover today. Um, Bill Gates, hope you smash some good puss in the meantime. I really hope he does. Melinda Gates, if you're listening, hit me up. No, hit me up. No, no, hit me up. No, Girl. no. Obligatory statement saying that YouTube is full of pedophiles. Yeah, that one's for you, Sam. Andy, it's been great having you on the show. I want to thank you for calling in today. Do you have anything that you'd like to plug? Any any words you'd like to get out? Any gospel you'd like to speak? No, I mean, my only plug is the United States military. So if you want to be part of an outstanding organization that is completely dedicated to radical centrism, if you want to be like a war fighting, weightlifting, tobacco chewing, giga chad that just fucks all the time, then join the military. Lose your political ideology. Come hang out with the boys. Call your nearest recruiter. Hell yeah. All right. That's very based. Uh, peace out, my grillos. Yeah, I'm old as a boomer. Mama said on Zuma. Everything cooler, long as I'm not Laura Luma. If you think I'm not number one, I just spell that rumor. Hit that victory boy down. Lost some motherfucking coochie. Default dance on a bitch. Hit the default dance on a bitch. Floss dance while I'm flossing in a whip. Victory Roy, yeah, when that top I hit. Self-incrimination, I have no participation. News keep asking, I don't say shit. You can't have my conversation. Look, I, I can agree with that. If we just if we just welded black people's doors shut like they do in China when people are uh, unclean, I guess I would say. <clears throat> I, I don't think I want to. Huh? I don't think I phrased that right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, probably not. Let, let's move on. From that. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut that. <laughs> cut what? I don't. I don't want to be on tape calling black people unclean. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, for sure. Um.